How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and today I want to go over one of the newer lighting metrics floating about, SSI. SSI is a new standard created by the Academy to evaluate light sources by comparing them to one another. In a previous video I went over black body radiators such as tungsten and the sun. These sources have very smooth and broad spectral curves which provide excellent color rendition. As filmmakers, there are thousands of different lights we can use to tell our story, but this means there are thousands of different variables that can affect our color. There are a ton of different lighting metrics used today to evaluate the quality of color, one of the most popular being CRI, but CRI is an old standard that's based on a human observer and wasn't developed with cinematography in mind. CRI is just an average of how well eight different colors are reproduced, and since CRI is based on a human observer, our eyes will naturally adjust colors to look correct. One of the biggest issues with CRI is that manufacturers can target these colors to increase a light CRI without regard to the rest of the spectrum. This is where TLCI comes in. TLCI was developed based on three chip cameras and evaluates color response based on the camera as an observer. Basically, one would set up a Macbeth chart and analyze how well a color is reproduced after it's passed through a camera and a display. The issue with TLCI is that it's based on the color response of broadcast cameras, which primarily use prisms before the light hits the sensor. Since the motion picture industry pretty much uses single sensor cameras, it would be unfair to evaluate a light source based on a completely different camera technology. Enter SSI, which stands for Spectral Similarity Index. The standard was developed by the Academy to overcome some of these challenges, so it's not based on human vision or a particular camera, but rather the spectral fingerprint of an actual source. This is super important to know. SSI is just concerned with how similar a light is to another. The higher the score, the closer the spectral power distribution with 100 being an exact match. For example, I have two different fixtures here, both of which are tungsten. This is a Lowell Reefa 1K and this is an Aries 650. Seeing as they're both black body emitters, I can expect a similar SSI between both lights. I'll go ahead and take a reading of the Aries 650 and my meter gives me a reading of about 3200 Kelvin with a TM30 fidelity score of a perfect 100. If I take a reading of the Lowell Reefa, I'll get pretty much the same result, 3200 Kelvin with an RF of 100. If I go into the SSI readings, I can see that these lights are indeed a perfect match. Currently, my reference light is the Reefa 1K, so the Aries 650 has an SSI of 99. The colored graph at the bottom represents the spectral fingerprint of the Reefa, while the yellow outline represents the spectral graph of the 650. For reference, I included a reading of a sky panel set to 3200 Kelvin, and you can see that it has an SSI of 72. Now, a score in the 70s is by no means a bad score. It just means that there might be slight color discrepancies based on the spectral graph. In this case, it's obviously due to the different lighting technology, tungsten and LED. Anything above an 80 is good, and anything above a 90 is excellent. We can even take a look at the spectral graph and compare the data for the two lights. The red outline is the sky panel, and you can see the various peaks and valleys it has due to it being an LED. Since SSI compares the spectral distribution of lights, it's important to meter at the same color temperature, so you're comparing apples to apples. So then, how can we best use SSI to evaluate lights? I really want to stress that this isn't a metric to gauge overall quality, it's a metric that compares sources to one another. If you liked using a particular light, you can establish it as your baseline and use SSI to find fixtures that are spectrally similar and would yield similar results. Say you loved using the sky panel, like me. If you were on a job that didn't have the budget for a sky panel or were traveling and needed to rent something locally, you could use SSI to find another fixture with similar spectrality, so color fidelity would appear as you'd normally expect. This would also be a pretty useful metric when in the market of buying new lights so that you could see how they stack up against your current kit. You can also use CIE illuminance as your reference point, such as natural daylight. As I stated in my previous video, LEDs are not created equal, so we tested eight different fixtures to see which had the most similar spectrum to natural daylight. For these tests, I set each fixture to 5600 Kelvin based on manufacturer parameters, meaning if the dial read 5600 Kelvin, I went with it. I didn't do any further tuning with CCT and plus or minus green since I mainly use SSI to determine similarity based on stock baselines. Really quick, pause the video and pick which shot you think best represents skin tones. I'll give you a few seconds. Again, these were shot using stock settings at 5600 Kelvin with no further adjustments from the C800. These are the results. I wanted to keep the quality of light consistent, so I used a roll of full silent grid as diffusion so that each light had similar softness. Full grid does warm up the source a bit, but only by about 120 degrees Kelvin. When looking at SSI, it's no surprise that the Joker was the best match for natural daylight with a score of 94. HMIs have pretty much been the gold standard for daylight sources. 
I was actually pretty impressed with how well the Gemini did. It has a smoother power distribution and a higher SSI compared to the sky panel. I like measuring SSI using stock settings so I can gauge how well a light performs at what the manufacturer deems as baseline. That way I'm giving each light a fair advantage to provide an accurate representation of CCD. As you can see, SSI is a great way of comparing sources to one another. I have started to see a few manufacturers use SSI when advertising their lights, but it's important to note that SSI is a metric of comparison, so you need to know what the reference light source is. You can't just say it has an SSI score of X without saying what it's being compared to. Metrics like SSI are great to have at trade shows like NAB, so you can do a quick evaluation of new lighting technology and see how it stacks up to current standards. I'm currently using the Sekonix 800 and one of my favorite features is the ability to store up to 99 measurements in the meter to recall later. This is especially handy at NAB because you have pretty much any light readily available for you to meter. Last year I was able to take a bunch of readings throughout the show and compare them to one another since they were stored internally. The C800 is great because it features all kinds of newer readings like XY, SSI, TLMF, and TM30. I've actually been using TM30 to evaluate my lights recently and I'll dive more into that in the future. Hopefully this video is helpful in some way. It's really important to keep up to date on new standards as our industry evolves with ever-changing technology. And it's even more important to know the shortcomings of these newer standards and technology. If you're interested in checking out the C800, I've left an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Big shout out to some of my homies for letting me borrow a couple of their lights for this video. It definitely would not have been possible without them. So be sure to peep game on their Instagrams. If you have any questions on this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.